Hello everyone in this virtual classroom. Look, I'm in I'm anime and total all-star here. It's finally time to talk about Spider-Man. I know all you can get typing the keyboards saying I'm finally talking about Spider-Man. But psych, we're not talking about Spidey. Because in this virtual in this mini series, Reese, we're doing something that most people never talk about. Well, most of the time that we think about people with spider like powers, Spider Man always comes into mind. Okay, we get it. Spidey is the most iconic character with the spider powers. Like, seriously, he had comic books, animated movies. Well, not animated movies, live action movies, cartoons. Heck, there's even a tokusatsu series called Supidamon by Toei. But as the years go by, in the recent developments in the Spider Man comics, yeah, basically that Spidey was having a rough time. Ow. <laughs> So basically, this is why I need to make this video, these video, this mini series, to teach you all that. Before I say it, I need to do something. Like I always get requests for to make other matchups for Spidey, such as Spidey versus Furries, Tobey Maguire Spider Man with the video games games versus this or others. And I always leave in the comment saying there are many other spider-like characters, not just Spidey. And this is probably made me want to make the series because I want to share this kind of knowledge to many of the Spider-Man fans who don't know anything about other characters. Now I need to change the background. Ground to something more mythical. There we go. So today, class, welcome to the first episode of Entering the Spider Verse, the true one. And we're starting with episode one Mythology. How could mythology inspire the Spider Verse? And before we begin, will you please leave a question that you have in the comment section below? Oh, and I'll try my best to answer them. After that, we will continue in the next era of the spider of the spider verse with the golden age of spiders. So let's begin with the mythology of the spiders. Mythology. One of the well-known best things about the world. We always know about the Greek gods, the Norse gods, the Japanese gods, the Chinese gods, and so many others. But when it comes to many other mythologies, they always have one thing in common, is that sometimes a spider can become a god. Yes, before Spider-Man, man, before Stan Lee, before any other things, mythology always has a spider-like god. We probably you know the Egyptian goddess Night Nith. The Egyptian spider goddess who was introduced in the during the time of this of Zell Wells' run in the Spider-Man comics. So let's start with her. And it makes sense to introduce her as the spider goddess of the spider people, because one, in mythology, she was a mo mother of most of the gods that we know, such as Osiris, Anubis. No, not Anubis, sorry. Osiris, Eris, 
Seth, and so many others. But, even though the other Egyptian gods exist in this in the Marvel Universe, we never got to see any of the Egyptian gods having a major role in the Marvel Universe. Because Marvel likes to dick ride the Norse Pantheon. Okay, I get it. The Norse Pantheon is underrated. But nowadays they're just being overused and overused. Like, for fuck's sake. Like, seriously, how many times do we have to see Thor, 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 and Thor? Like, Marvel, you have many other pantheons you can use. Not just the Norse. And this is why. Why do you introduce a goddess that was probably one of the most important ones in mythology? Even though she's supposed to be a spider god. But even though Nick is the most became popular with the spider verse, there are plenty of other spider deities. Such as Iolus. <laughs> just kidding. I uh, you know, I'm just gonna call him the spider god that was introduced in the in the Shimigami Tensei fighting game. Yes, that guy with the legs, who looks like a spider god, is definitely a spider god. Yes. And he finally gets the spotlight that he deserves in Shibigami Tensei. Like seriously Marvel, you need to stop dick right in the Norse gods. And let the spotlight of the other gods you have. And they did a pretty good job with his design in the Shibigami Tensei game. Even though my friend doesn't like Shimigami Tensei, but we will probably agree that some of their designs are fashionable and some are way better than them than some of the Marvel god Marvel designs. Hey, what good they did with Thor, even though they didn't get his hair color right. But they got some of the things that the Norse people described Thor, like having gloves, having a belt. Yeah, those. And that's what the Marvel Thor doesn't have. He doesn't have those kind of things. And that's stupid. Look, I love Marvel Thor, but ever since I learned that that mythology Thor is is a redneck, I pretty started name Marvel Thor now. So yeah. Moving on. Then there's Native American mythology, and this is where you all are you going to be confused. There's a spider deity called Spider Grandmother, and describing by the tribe who worshipped her as a god. They say that she created the universe by making a web. Does that sound familiar? Yes. They used the same thing in the Spider-Verse event, but instead it was created by an Egyptian goddess. And I really like the fact that she's called Spider-Grandmother, and I would have liked the f seeing her as the main creator of the Spider-Verse instead of Nyx, or a co-creator. And it's crazy that we never... In her in the line of her Native American gods. Like, if you look at the Native American gods, my God, you only see a bunch of guys. Like, she is one of the most important deities. She's probably as powerful as Manitou, who is the head god of the North of the Native Americans. So, yeah. It, it's kind of crazy that you can tell. That you, like, Marvel's not doing well because they were just trying to make Spider-Man more relatable as a teenager. Even though, though we kind of see an adult Peter Parker more times than a teenager. So, and now let's get to a part that Spider-Man 
took as inspiration from mythology is that transforming into a spider monster. Yes, mythology did the idea of a person transforming into a spider monster. So that's the Greeks and Japanese. And we all know the story of, of Arachne, who gives Athena, the goddess of wisdom, a big L, and she gets super pissed, and she turns her into a spider. Or does that sound familiar? Well, even though Spidey didn't turn, wasn't transformed by, by a god, I guess when that's what happens when you piss off someone who is a god. But what about Japanese? Japan has a spider monster who is a female, but there were plenty of it. Plenty of them, but this one is the most recognizable. Of course, I'm talking about the Chirogumo. The Chirogumo well, is a spider like yokai who hunts down handsome young men by using her charm and beauty to entice them. Heck, there's even a story about a man who is a lumberjack who falls in love with a Jirogumo and his life force was getting sucked out of him. But then a muck shows up and he tells him to stop hanging out with the Jirogumo. And you know that he's about to stop hanging out with her? Nope, he still wants that spider. I guess that's something that most spider people have in common. They love to use the spider technique of charming everyone, including redheads. Yeah, I guess that's a crazy common thing with spiders. Well, yeah. So yeah, that's the end of episode one of Entering the Spider-Verse. everyone so yeah there's no intro role for this video and so we tune in next time is that we're going to enter the golden age of spiders starting with the first spider hero the spider <laughs>